sets everything in terms of wiring. We're gonna page I include the SCAD file which is to edit the actual code that makes the shape or you can download the STL file for each of the different types of clock and then we should also download the four digit dot YML firmware we're done constructing the device and it'll look like this when we're done then we're gonna plug it into the computer and flash the firmware on with ESP home and ESP dashboard which I'll walk you through and then we will have it up and running and in the future if you want to make any changes to adjust the color or the brightness you can do that over wi-fi much more easily and just plug it into the wall to the ac adapter you can then plug it into the computer i only have usb c in my laptop a macbook air so i'm going to use this extender uh, on my usb a cable and plug it into the computer. I'm going to do this all just in the terminal so it's as accessible as possible. We want to make a new directory where it will work. So I'll make a directory in our home folder called ESP Flash. And I'll move to it in this way. I'm going to run some code and I want to install ESP Home to do it. I'm going to do that in a virtual environment that I create with Python like this. And then I'm going to open the virtual environment or source it by saying that. Well, I'm going to go pip install ESP Home. To install the ESP home directory. While I'm doing that, I'm going to go into the firmware and STL and SCAD file, and I'm going to copy these into this directory that I've just made as well. I'm going to make a new text file here as well. And a, a YMAL file, actually, kind of like a text file, and call it secrets.yml. And I'm going to keep some things about my Wi Fi in there so I could write this home directory, or sorry, where I am right now. It opens up a dashboard, and then I can go to that page by copying it and pasting it into my browser and this is where I'll interact with my firmware I am going to open this with a text editor and you can see it refers to some of these secrets in the secret file like my Wi-Fi password and Wi-Fi SSID which I'll show you how to set up and it has my time zone close this and I'm gonna write rename this just to remove the suffix that it got added to it. Okay. Let's go down here and find the details of our secrets file. So we'll just open up in the text editor. I'm going to replace that with this. And so you can see here's where you'll put your network name. Here's where you'll put your password. Here's where you can put a new password that you're going to use to confirm this device when you do over the air updates. And this encryption key here you'll get by clicking on a link. As it says in the Thingiverse, at this link, you can grab a code that's randomly generated right there and paste it in right there. For the Wi-Fi I'm going to 
and I'll put in the Wi-Fi here behind my camera and you would put yours and you want to make sure you're on that same network and I think it is better to make it a two gigahertz network so you can set up a guest network in Google Home for example but you might try the other way then you'd put in your password for that network that gets saved in the secrets file and I'm going to close it and make my webcam small again so we'll go back to our terminal we're going to go into our directory here we have a secrets file that's working a firmware that should be working and so we should be able to get this going in our dashboard now i'm going to close the current dashboard and go back to the terminal and close it and do that again notice that i'm using the folder where we are so if i go list i see those files that we have that we just made and I can open up this dashboard by copying this into my browser. Okay, it's offline because it's plugged in, not even plugged into my computer, but it also hasn't been flashed yet. But it does say new, and I'm going to now plug it into the computer, but I, you'll see that there's a couple steps first. So I'm going to go install, plug into this computer, now, I don't understand what this says. It seems like it could be fixed, but I'm going to just follow these instructions because they've worked for me before. It's going to download my project as a .bin file, and it takes a while to prepare the download here. And I'm going to download that file and press keep here if you get a warning in your downloads of Google Chrome. And then I'm going to open up the web app here at this point I'm going to plug in my clock. So I've just plugged in the wire that's connected to the clock. If I were to look carefully, I would maybe see the blue flashing light when you plug it in to show that it's ready to be flashed. I'm going to say allow, and then I'm going to go connect and connect to that serial port that I've just attached. I don't need to press prepare for first use. I can just press install. I'm going to choose the file that I just downloaded, the bin file, and then I'm going to install it. And it should, if it works correctly, erase what was currently on the device. I'm not going to touch the device just in case to be superstitious. It says installing. It's never worked this well. Usually I have to unplug and plug back in the device a couple times a la Mario and Donkey Kong but here we are 79% installed and I'll open the clock to show you the big reveal I think so it should already work plugged into the computer and the, yes it does first it starts with 12 and after connecting to the Wi-Fi, it should get the current time and display the time. See the device is reset. It's started again and gone to 12. If we look at the logs, we can see now that it is picking up the correct time, which matches the time on our computer. And we've done it. We've flashed this firmware. Whenever we plug it in, it'll connect to the Wi-Fi network and find the current time and start from there. And you can go in and change the brightness if you want, for example. Um, right on here. And now we can also send our updates over Wi-Fi. So you could go plug it in somewhere else in your house and it will start up and then you can edit the file here and maybe you can adjust the color you might want to adjust this color here this is the green color i have so i find that this isn't in rgb it's in green red blue so you might go 255 and 20 and make it a reddish color i think and this is where you see the mapping onto different segments and these kind of things. I'm going to try to find a general, well, that should increase the brightness because it went from 200 to 255. So I'm going to press save and then I'm going to press install wirelessly. Uh, 
and it should reset into red. There we go. So you could ask ChatGPT or work yourself into more complicated um, animations or different colors. Or We have one clock in the house that gets redder and redder as the kids need to get ready for school, for example. Thanks for... Uh, Thank <laughs> you.